Natalia Silva Cajneiro, doctoranda en teoría política en la USP de Sao Paulo. Su investigación se enfoca en el entrelazado de la racialidad, la negritud y la política. También pertenece a la colectiva Gira. Natalia nos hablará en inglés y el título que nos ofrece es Origin and Creation on Black Feminist Poetics in Brazil. So, hello everyone. Good afternoon. I want to thank to Moira, Juliana for the organization and invitation. And also th thanks um, the staff of uh, Yale the, that organized this event and was very carefully organized. And also Leah, Leah Tula and all the ones that are here. So, I want to start with two epigraphs that are, represent, that are presented here. So, the world is full of painful stories. Sometimes it seems that they are the only kind of story that exists. And even so, I, I found myself thinking how beautiful the drop of water was between the trees. Lauren Olamina, character of Octavia Butler. And the second one, uh, you can pass the, the slides. Okay, uh, thank you. A forest field can be a mountain range of smoke or a hole dug in the clay. An arrangement of herbs is specific, specific, okay. Specifically, I'm always, I have a problem with this word, but you understand. Uh, position it in relation to our presence. An emanation of black force generated in performance. A field, a field does not have to be strong in the moral sense. And almost always the force field is a precarious shape, a portal in the process of disappearing but it establishes the condition of our movement between dimensions, J. Mombasa and Musa Matthews. Mm. So uh, I, we, want, we can stop the presentation. I will just return to it at the end, if it, that is possible. Okay, and so I do not want to perform here a force that was not present at the moment that I wrote this text that I, now I read to you, at, at that moment that I, that I was smelling the printed air as said phenomenon. Uh, that text I wrote somehow already with you and with so many others whose name I know or not know that are alive or not alive but do exist. In Brazil, whenever there is a manifestation of the Black movement, we say present. So Marielle Franco, George Floyd, João Pedro, Agatha, João Alberto Silveira, I'm sorry, and many, many, many others, countless others present. So, how to do things, how, how to inhabit such a difficult time. In the last year, when the pandemic and isolation started in Brazil, I learned a lot with Lauren Olamina, main character of the parable of the sour of Octavia Butler. In this dystopian social scientific scientific novel from 1993, Butler follows the Im imagined results from the trends already present in her moment. Global warming, economic dispossession, police violence, and so on. Uh, I think you know or heard of this book already, but let me say that it draw my attention that the sky in Lauren world was a beautiful sky. For example, there was no gasoline or electricity anymore. 
last year in Sao Paulo, where I live, during what we call red phase of quarantine, with few cars on the streets, the sky was also a beautiful sky and clean, as I have never seen in Sao Paulo. And it is still beautiful today. My intention here is not to say we are in Lauren's world. Jota Mombasa, a Brazilian performer and writer, says that it is necessary to know how to read the world, study it, in order to see the signs of the catastrophe and to find escape routes in it. And exactly this skill she reads in Lauren Olamina exactly because she doesn't pretend the abscess doesn't exist. I find interesting to think about one similarity in Lauren's experience and our moment. In the book, people do not stop wanting for the world to be as it was before, even if in Lauren's eyes, this is a kind of self-deception. At the moment when progress shows its other side, the apocalypse, if you want to name like that, uh, the before is seen as a better time. But whoever in 2020, 2017, 1993 reads a book like this, especially if the one who reads it is Black, Indigenous, and other subaltern groups, wonders what a good world was that. So I suppose one of our main problems is to open the capacity of imagination beyond, beyond of what we already know, beyond linear time. In my speech, I am with the Black feminist poetics, a radical praxis towards the end of the world as we know it, elaborated by Denise Ferreira da Silva. Black feminist poetics has the capacity to transform time into a year, and in doing so, it locates the subject of thought, politics, and economics, the transparent eye that which can define difference, but is not defined by it. By doing this, she reads a image of a, the implicated world of difference without separability. That is to say, where everything, every, every singularity is the expression of an elementary entanglement and not the unresolvable strangeness. So in what follows, I'll briefly present the civil comparison between US and Brazil, and then focus and in the resembling of the black feminist present in this black feminist poetics. Okay. Uh, and at the end, I will share with you some pictures. So for our conversation here, I find interesting to point out uh, that in her initial texts, uh, and I'm thinking especially in Facts of Blackness, a text from 1998, the Silva explicit how the case of Brazil could contribute to a global understanding of racial subjugation, and yet, takes into account the singularities of each place. In order to do this, she has first to undo the ethnocentric universalism that governs the reading of racial subjugation in Brazil, seeing it as a deviation case of the, from the United States. Because of our national text has written this discourse is of miscegenation. People tend to say that Brazilian lack racial identity or 
that race is not important here, just class. That is to say, racial invocation is not always present in Brazilian Black people subjugation. And this kind of discourse, seeing Brazil as a deviation case of the United States, is not common from is not only common from the people from U.S., but also people who look from this situation here because the knowledge tools of social sociology of race relations were built in the US and because of how knowledge works. Okay. I have a problem here that I will just read in my this moment. So I find interesting Okay, it is right. <laughs> okay, then so Thinking about miscegenation, uh, it makes a different discourse, discourse about the black female here. Seeing it not, not as the guardian of a black community, like in the US, as I learned with Angela Davis and Hortense Spillers, but as responsible for mixing. And because Mississaging is ultimately a celebration of rape. It makes uh, the female body a sort of, co of, of a collective pro property in respect to which basic patriarchal moral rules do not apply. And I'm sitting Denise here. The sexual ob objectification of the black female is here celebrated as a national treasure, she says. But she can also, Denise Vera da Silva makes a point by looking at the case of Brazil that where racial sub sub subjugation, as I said it, was not constructed by explicit exclusion segregation. Race subordination is built at intersection of the various texts which deploy modern tech categories, such as race, gender, nation, class, in, and class, in attempts to produce the particularities of multiracial social spaces in different moments of their histories and to construct the being of the collectivities, bodies and territories inhabiting these spaces. So, as the Silva puts it, Brazil can contribute to a global reading of race by demonstrating that the racial subjugation doesn't need racial invocation. The exclusion logic makes cer certain claims of racial injustice, such as denouncing police terror inarticulated or unheard because they fail to fulfill the criterion of invoca invoking race. This is because the explanation of the dead is already resolved, for example, by saying that in black territories like favelas, people do not have jobs or that there is familiar disgregation. And that is the cause of the violence. Okay, then, so I pass to the black feminist poetics and how she makes, okay. 
okay? Uh, and how to make shine a possibility to live in different dimensions. That is necessary because in the colonial world, total violence is already resolved in the state capital understanding. We can intuit a possibility to inhabit this world with her, where total violence is a rule, and at the same time to confront, confront it. For example, to stop or restrain the current security policy to persecute the murders, but also to live in the world where total violence is the rule, as Leia quoted to the colonial capitalist world have already uh, uh, road had come to an end, as if we have all, uh, already all the tools necessary to know it otherwise. She claims, Denise Ferreira da Silva claims that in order to address the different issues that haunt us, like global warming, coronavirus, economic dispossession, etc., it's required to move towards decolonization. Decolonization, and I'm quoting da Silva here, is a total reconstruction of the world through the restoration of total value, without which capital would not have prospered and from which it is still supported, end of quote. Value here takes on several meanings, for, be, meanings because for example, emancipated slaves were not only stripped of means of production, but, quoting Denise again, again, were also apprehended by a political political symbolic arsenal that attribute the economic dispossession to an inherent moral and intellectual defect. Although black feminist poetics is not herself decolonization, she demands it and works by opening the imagination, releasing it from the grips of understanding in order to make this demand less absurd. She confronts thought also because of her refusal to explain the feminine sub subaltern subject of raciality into categories. Silva notes that Silva notes that especially since the 80s, feminism and anti-racism have increasingly articulated the mechanism of gender and racism showing how when associated with gender, races produce an additional gender exclusion, and when associated with race, gender produces additional racial exclusion, and so on. But, and quoting her, precisely the logic that go governs the construction of these categories as principles of exclusion, and their counter made in patriarchal hell makes it difficult for us to understand how gender and race works together to institute a particular type of sub subordinate subject. In this book that I'm quoting here, Told Toward a Global Idea of Race from 2007, the Silva shows the political dimension of thought inscribed in bodies and territories. She asks why raciality, the idea of human difference produced by modern thought remains so effective after more than a hundred years of the rejection of the category of race. Since its effects like the death, the death of non-white people without an ethical crisis remains. She then engages with modern philosophy and science and maps how its constitution is re responding and facilitating colonization. So she sees that the conditions of possibility of race were previously placed, 
privileged place. They are in the very constitution of modern representation it, and in, it, in its onto-epistemological pillars. They would be, as she names, determinability, sequentiality, and simple separability. In the same book, we see how cultural difference that replaced racial difference is also a tool of raciality and how it organized the global space for cultural difference, racial subjugation would correspond to Western white's inappropriate reaction to difference. In this rearrangement, raciality continues to fulfill its function that is the transubstantialization of mechanisms of expropriation in natural defects, intellectual and moral, they are signed by physical difference, practice, institution. And I see this, I just quote her, quoted her. She points out that her claim is not that hum humanity belonged to a particular culture that postulated itself as a universal, but that, that the very distinction between universal and particular would be a modern invention. Putting it another way, universally itself is a production of raciality. In order for the subject to thrive, to thrive he needs its other racial subjects to be seen as always already disappearing. So not only the exclusion logic, but the, also the obliteration logic governs racial subjugation. Uh, so the cultural difference could reassign of racial difference, but does not erase the meanings articulated in by the, the by the racism, the biological racism. That is, the connection between bodily traits, place of origin, and mental functions. Racial difference not, is now resignified as a substantive sign of the of of the long temporal process that left certain bodily characters in prehistoric conditions. Or pointing, pointing in another way, blackness is out of time, yet sustains linear temporal temporality. From this position, the Silva elaborates a procedure, procedure to remove the world from the from the clutches of the subject, releasing the category of blackness. She says, when blackness returns the necessity of time to the subject, she, it recalls that the world and its categories thrive in the contingency of the existence shared between the subject of whiteness and his other racials. Without time, the word becomes one here, and she can locate the transparent eye. So finally, I want to share the picture to, of the deputy, Erika Malaguinho of Sao Paulo that Juliana already presented, just for us to see how, how it, how I see the Black feminist politics working here, not just because Erica read Denise, I don't know about that, but because she, but because uh, in her refusal to disappearing, she confrontates rep political representation, and by doing so, she, she, makes, she makes shine violence in another way. Maybe the, our task is to start, up, uh, to start 
talking about violence in different ways. Make shine violence already resolved in the state, in capital, in time, into the categories. So, and the next one. And also, I want to say that Erika Malunguinho is inside the state, and although she, she's she is talking against it. So this is a capacity that I want to be inspired by. And this the last one is from Anastasia, Anastasia Livre. Uh, and I'm fascinated with this picture because it makes obvious that uh, I don't know if you know already Anastasia, Anastasia, she has, um, uh, it's a picture, very common in Brazil of an enslaved woman, and she has an iron mask uh, in her, in a, and, and Yuri Cruz make, made this picture that we see right now without the iron mask. And I just want to point out that with the removal of Anastasia's mask, we know less and not more about her. Thank you.